G'day there, and welcome to my City Skylines 2 tutorial series. Have a video you want to see? Drop me a comment below. So if you're a City Skylines fan, unless you've been living under a rock, you'll know that Paradox Mods beta released this week, which had me breathing a sigh of relief, not gonna lie. If you've watched some of my content, you know I love a good mod, no shade to vanilla players, but I'm definitely a big fan of modding for sure. So I was excited to see what Paradox mods have to offer. I know it's in beta and so we really have to be careful when we're forming an opinion on this because working in the IT industry myself as my day job, if you're not sure what beta means, the beta phase generally means that the software is feature complete but likely to contain several known or unknown bugs. So in essence, we're effectively testing this. So if stuff doesn't work properly or things are a little janky, <laughs> that'll be why. That being said, let's dive in and check out how we mod our game. So I play via Steam and after you download the latest update, which will be version 1.10 F1, when you hit the play button, you will now get a launch option before the game loads. And we can see we now have two options, to play with mods or without. You can also choose to always use this option, but I'm not going to tick that as I do want the option to load the game up without Paradox mods, but that's entirely up to you. Once the game boots, we get the pop-up on the Beach Properties Asset Pack that's just launched alongside this, but this video isn't about that, so we'll just click OK and then our menu screen appears. Now we can see two new menu options, the Editor Beta and Paradox Mods Beta. If we click on Paradox Mods, it'll do a quick update check there and then we see our welcome screen, then just below some of the featured mods as highlighted by Paradox. We then have a couple of menu options here. We have Featured, which is the screen we can see here, Browse, Playsets and Library. So if we click on Browse, we can now see all the mods available. We have the option to filter these on the right here, so we can just display say the code mods or just display maps, whatever you want to do in terms of filtering. From here we can click on a mod and we get more info. If the mod creator has added in some screenshots, we can see those here. We can see any tags and mod info on the right here. And we can even click on the mod author and it'll jump to a list of all the mods by that creator, which I think is quite neat. Down below that, we see the mod description the mod creator has provided. And that can vary from mod to mod. But for this one, we're getting all the info here. Key bindings, some known issues, and just a warning that this is an alpha version of the mod. So just to be mindful of that. Then back up the top, we can just click to add it to our active playset. So let's jump over there and talk playsets. When you first load this up, you'll get a basic playset as standard and you could start adding your mods to that, but I've created my own here and moving forward, I could have different playsets for different cities if I wanted. So I imagine when we get assets, we can add all those to different playsets and then switch those out depending on which one we're gonna play. I guess kinda like profiles in Skive if you've used that in Cities 1. So here in my playset I've got here, you can see all the mods I've added and from here we can click on them to go back to the mod info page. Or we can click to disable or enable them, or we can even delete them from here. What's also really good about how this works is with mod dependencies. If you download a mod that has dependencies, it will throw a pop-up and let you choose to download those dependencies as well, which is pretty handy. Then we have the library. And here we can see the mods and we can remove them or add them to playsets, see if there are any issues or errors and filter them. So unlike a playset, we're seeing every mod that is installed here in a big long list. And we can quickly add or remove them from our playsets as we see fit. So once we have all our mods installed and our playset active and we're good to go, we can close this screen. Then in the notification area, if we've installed a new mod, we'll probably get a notification here to say we need to restart the game. Here we can see our list of enabled mods changed as I was clicking things on and off to demonstrate. So let's do a restart anyway here just to keep the game happy. 
I'm not sure if it's because it's beta, but I do find most changes require a restart. Even though we didn't technically install a new mod, it's still wanting a restart and so that's something to keep in mind. I also found that when I was adding my mods in, sometimes I got an error pop up to say that there's a server error when I'm trying to add a mod or something. So I found a quick game restart sorted that out, so again, might be that things are in beta. It happened a lot when the mods were first available, so it could have been to do with the number of people trying to hit the server at the same time. It's much better today, so who knows, but restarting is so quick in CS2, so no biggie. Once we've restarted, we sometimes see little additional notifications here with green ticks saying things are loaded in successfully which you might have saw when I reloaded there. That might also happen when new mods have been added or things like that. Once all that's done though, then we're ready to start a new game or load a save. And then once we're in, we're good to go. So so good. Ah mods, how I love thee. <laughs> From here, if you come back out to the game menu and we select options, we now see that again, depending on which mods you have installed, additional options that we can tweak. So I have a few mods installed here and you can see when I click on each one, we get certain options to tailor things to our liking. One small tip though, which I think we saw on one of the mod descriptions as well, just remember to save often and save differently, meaning different save files each time. That way you can roll back incrementally if you need to, if something goes wrong. And there we have it, all things Paradox Mods Beta in City Skylines 2. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. And happy building. Actually, <laughs> happy modding. <laughs>